Welcome to a special web extra edition of Plain Talk here on Eagle Eye TV. Today we are joined by State Senator Gerald Dow, who is running for the Republican nomination for Alabama's Agriculture and Industries Commissioner. Thank you, Senator Dow, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. It's always great to be on the campus here at Auburn and been in this area. I represent not right into Auburn, but I get a good portion of Lee County, so all the Auburn issues also are part of my issues, so I've enjoyed representing this area. Senator Dow, you're running um, for Agriculture and Industries Commissioner. Um, many of our viewers might not know exactly what um, that position entails. Do you mind just going into a well, little detail about that? You know, ag and industry is the largest single industry in Alabama, $70 billion. It far exceeds anything else. It would take 200 new Toyota plants to furnish enough jobs that ag and industry does. 600,000 people every day make their living out of ag and industry in our state, and sometimes it's overlooked. And I think that what that industry needs and what that department needs is, is a cheerleader who will go out there and say, let, let me tell you how important this is. You need to understand. And we need to encourage young people to get into agriculture. We need to continue to expand what we're doing. We need to make sure we're not over-regulating agriculture and industry. Sometimes government gets carried away with regulations and they put on regulations that become so uh, adverse that the industry can't produce and do what it wants to. The Ag Department is in charge with a lot of things. One is safety of food, to make sure that you go to the grocery store or you go and eat that that food is safe. The other thing the department does is it's, it's in charge of weights and measurements. That means that when you go to the grocery store and you get a pound of hamburger, you've gotten a pound of hamburger. You didn't get an ounce or two short. Or you go to the filling station and fill up with gas, you get a full gallon of gas. You don't get two or three ounces short because you know, some unscrupulous people could fix your pump, cut you out a couple of ounces, and in a few dollars they've made on the, down the road. So that's one of the major things. Weights and measurements, to make sure that food is safe, and also to make sure that regulations don't stifle the industry. And we need to grow this industry. We've got plans to grow that through an irrigation program. You know, we think that we can, uh, we can add about 100,000 acres a year to irrigation in this state. If you can irrigate small crops of strawberries or tomatoes or specialty crops, you can certainly improve the economy and keep the price of food down. Um, a big part of Alabama's agriculture industry is exporting. I know um, current agriculture and industries commissioner um, McMillan has spoken a lot about having to travel to unique countries like Cuba and places like that to promote Alabama's agriculture industry. In what ways do you plan on working with um, other countries and other um, other areas outside of Alabama in order to open new markets for Alabama's farmers? Great question, and that's one of our major part of our platform. You know, for years, Alabama, we exported more chicken to Cuba than anybody. We were the number one exporter. Suddenly, Arkansas has surpassed us with a tremendous amount of increase in their exports. And their poultry comes from Arkansas to Mobile to Cuba. And what's happened is Arkansas went into Cuba and they they joined up with some individuals and they opened them office there to begin to promote their product. I've already met with the state docs people. They're willing to go half and half with us and let's open us an office in Cuba to begin to promote that. Not just in Cuba, but the whole Caribbean Basin. You know, they make no power poles in the Caribbean Basin. Every power pole, when they have a disaster, has to be shipped from Mobile to Puerto Rico to Cuba. We, we produce those, so we can increase that production too. And that's just one arena. We, can, uh, we, went to, uh, we went to Columbia two years ago to promote selling Alabama catfish in the grocery stores in Columbia. We went in the grocery store and cooked catfish, and people came by, we gave them samples. They're not eating catfish down there. and became a good staple product, so we're exporting catfish from West Alabama to Columbia grocery stores, and that's the kind of thing that we need to continue to do. The market is right, we got the Port at Mobile, so we need to continue to move forward and increase that export. Alabama has three um, land-grant institutions, Auburn, Tuskegee, and Alabama a and I know um, you've also served as on the board for several years over at Troy University as well. In what ways do you plan on partnering with Alabama's public four-year institutions well, um, in order to promote agriculture? And that, and that, that's one thing, of course, Auburn and, and Tuskegee and, and Alabama State lead the way in, in experimenting, developing new products and ensuring the products we got are safe and moving forward, making more corn per acre and more cotton per acre. They've been the leaders, and we're continuing to be the leaders in that. 
uh, I saw an interesting article where uh, Auburn here is, is coming with a new product that they, they can be able to produce in this state. So it's just so many opportunities there. And where my connection to Troy is, Troy has campuses in 17 foreign countries. We think we can take those campuses and begin to again say, hey, you need to look at exporting product from Alabama. You need to export. You know one of the biggest exporters we have is chicken feed to China. Uh, we need to look at the other Caribbean basin areas and some of the Asian countries where we can produce. And, and chicken industry continues to grow. It, it's the second largest in the state. You've got timbers first, and you've got poultry as the second. And poultry continues to grow in this area, especially up in the northern part and the northeast part of the state. And we can continue to grow that. We can produce the poultry we need here, and we can export it and, and let those people make a fair profit on their product. And then my final um, question for you is your most high profile um, opponent is Mr. Pate, who's a, a landscaper over at, in central Alabama. In what ways do you plan on um, setting your campaign and your, your vision for this position um, apart from what well, his is? Well, and, and I know Mr. Pate, I've served in the Guard with his father. Uh, Mr. Pate didn't serve in the Guard, but he and his father uh, served in his Guard. His father used to fly me around in helicopters, so I got a lot of respect for his father and for him. He's a nice guy. What sets us apart is my experience in government and how you can relate with the legislature. The legislature has to appropriate every dime that goes to the Department of Ag and Energy. They have to appropriate every dime. I understand the process. I understand when financing gets short, uh, they're going to cut those departments that have less political clout over on the hill. I have those friends over there. I drew every legislative district. I drew the Senate district and the House district that we have today. I drew those because I chaired the reinforcement. So every one of those people over there, I have a close personal relationship. So when they start cutting our department, uh, then I'm going to be there calling on favors and saying, hey, you don't need to cut us. You need to let us increase our budget or keep our budget where it is where we can continue to do the job we have. I have that rapport. I have the experience of, 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 of running and working with a large number of people. You know, There's about 400 people working in that department. 400 people the other day go to work for that department, and certainly the, the administration of that department is important, and I think I can bring that to the table as well. Well, thank you so much, Senator Dow, for joining us today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's been great. Thank, thank you, you very much. And thank you for watching. Thank you. Join us each week for a great in-depth conversation with the local leader on Plain Talk on the Eagle Eye TV and extra um, web extra episodes like this one on eagleeyeauburn.com. Thank you, and have a great week.